myself, it's about time I've made myself a fully lined professional wool coat. I've dreamt of this day, and now it is here, and I'm so excited. I've already pattern drafted, cut, and prepped my fabric. That process is in my previous video, which I have linked below, but today I'm going to walk you through the construction. It was a very satisfying process. I learned a bunch of new techniques, and I ended up with a beautiful coat in the end. This gorgeous fabric that I'm using is from one of my favorite fabric retailers, Blackbeard Fabrics. They're one of my top favorite fabric retailers, so definitely check them out. And finally, if you enjoy this vibe, like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and comment as well, because we got a lot more clothes to make together. To shape my under collar and lapel, instead of using fusible interfacing, I used a custom tailoring method which requires horsehair and lots of hand stitching, namely pad stitching. This method is very time consuming, so if time is an issue or if you're a beginner, I don't recommend this method. For the fusible interfacing method, it requires only shaping the under collar with steam, and for the lapel, it requires both steam and taping the roll line. What I have done with this collar is pad stitched it in rows starting with the collar stand, then fanning out towards the rest of the collar. This creates a natural roll to the wool. I then folded the collar at the roll line, pinned it to a tailor's ham, and steamed it to keep the shape. Then I removed 5 eighths of an inch around the collar's edge so that it doesn't get sewn into the seam. The front coat is a much more involved process if you're doing the custom tailoring method. What I have to do is fell stitch here, tailor based here, fell stitch here, I've already done that, tailor based here, pad stitch this whole area, and add tailor's tape all the way around here to the bottom. Baste here and baste all the way to the hem. After adhering the horsehair to the shell fabric, or in your case, adhering the fusible interfacing, cut a piece of twill tape the same length as the roll line. Then pin one end at the break point an eighth inside the roll line, then pull the other end a quarter to a half inch beyond the neckline. Then you can either machine stitch, or as I did, fell stitch, which allows it to be invisible on the outside of the fabric. After this, I properly pad stitched my roll line. And there's little Peppercorn the cat being the cutest little nuisance. He actually just got her in December and she, she's she been such a joy to have around. At this point, you would lay a folded towel along the roll line, fold back the lapel, and steam. For some reason, I completely missed this step. I finished pad stitching the lapel, then I twill tape around the outer edge, fell stitching it in place. The whole outer edge of the lapel down to the hem should be trimmed an eighth beyond the seam allowance, so five eighths of an inch, since my seam allowance everywhere is half an inch. We can now assemble the body. Face your back pieces right sides together and sew to the drill marks at the start of the vent. Press the seam open and flat. Then facing right sides together, sew the side seams and shoulder seams of the coat. Make sure that with all of these seams, that if you have a check or plaid fabric, that you're matching the pattern. I used more pins than normal to keep the side seam in place as I sew. You'll also see that I've already applied two pockets, but I discovered that it's better to do this after the side seams are assembled since my pockets are so close to the seams. For the shoulder seam, my back shoulder is a bit bigger to allow for the fit of the shoulder. I will ease this in and secure with a piece of twill tape along the sew line. Press open these seams to finish. 
and you'll notice throughout this video that I use both a press cloth to protect the fabric and an old-fashioned iron to set my seams. The weight of it and the coldness of the iron allow it to cool and thus set it in the position I intended it. Usually one would use a tailor's clapper, which is a wooden tool used in the same way Now we move on to the remaining two pockets. Start by placing your pocket flap and lining right sides together and sew around the curve at a quarter inch. Turn out and iron flat. I've basted the center area of my pocket placement. Mark a one inch box around it, extending the end lines for reference. Next, I take my welts that have been folded lengthwise, place the folds against the guidelines with half an inch extending beyond either side of the end guidelines. Then mark a quarter inch line from the fold of the welt, marking the ends where it lines up with the extended guideline. Then sew directly along these lines, stopping at the end markings. The more exact you are, the better the pocket will turn out to be. Next, cut down the center and cut Vs at either end, close to the end of your stitch. Flip the seam allowance and ends inside and iron flat. Insert the pocket flap and align the raw edge with the top welt seam allowance and sew. Then take the longer of your pocket bags and sew it into the seam with the pocket flap. The shorter pocket bag is sewn into the lower welt seam. When this is complete, sew up the seam, preferably with a zipper foot so you can get as close to the edges of the welt as possible. With the outer pockets complete, I turn my attention to the inner pocket on the facing. I love a cute little inner pocket on a jacket or coat. I just find it so convenient. And so when I make a jacket, I usually find this element essential. So with the help of my little peppercorn, I repeated the same steps on the mini pocket as I did with the larger outer pocket. Now that we've completed all of the pockets, let's assemble the collar and lapel. With right sides together, match the shoulders of the front and back facing and sew them together, pressing these seams open. Make sure that you mark the drill marks on your collar pieces. Match your top collar to your facing assembly, lining up the notches on the collar to the center back, to the shoulder seams, and match the drill marks on the collar to the drill marks on the facing. Sew the seam stopping at the drill marks. Trim the seam allowance to a quarter inch and press open. 
Do the exact same thing with the under collar and coat shell. Then with right sides together, match the facing to the shell. Sew the collar, stopping one stitch from either collar notch, keeping the collar neck seam allowance out of the way. Then stop your stitch there, and restart it again in the same fashion on each lapel. If there is a gap in the notch of the collar, go in with a needle to close it. Trim the collar and lapel seam allowance down to a quarter inch all the way to the hem of the coat. Press these seams open. Once that is complete, we are going to turn it out and understitch the facing, lapel, and under collar. Since the lapel folds back and shows the facing, we have to sew the seam allowance towards the facing below the lapel, and then switch over to sewing the seam allowance towards the shell. End this understitch about two to three inches from the lapel point. For the collar, push the seam allowance towards the under collar and understitch there, ending two to three inches from either point. Then you're going to press everything. For the collar, line up your neck seams first and then press. Then hand stitch or machine stitch your neck seams together. Take your top sleeves and sew a pair of large stitches between the front and back notches. Gather these slightly. This is the sleeve cap ease. Next take your under sleeves and with the notches matching, pin at the corresponding edges of the top sleeve, right sides together. I decided to use the reverse side of the fabric, resulting in a two-tone sleeve. Once sewn, press open the seams. Turn out and begin to pin to the body, matching single notches at the front and double notches at the back, the undersleeve notch at the side seam, and the cap notch at the shoulder seam. 
Adjust the gather of the sleeve head to match the armhole and evenly space this ease as well as possible between their notches. Stitch together with the coat body facing up and the sleeves facing down. This way the feed dogs of your machine will help ease in your cap and eliminate potential puckering in the sleeve head. So far, this is what we have accomplished. You'll see the wrinkle in the back caused by the lack of shoulder pad inside it, so we're going to add the sleeve head and the shoulder pad next. I have here a length of prepared sleeve head that I purchased. The sleeve head keeps the sleeve cap from caving in. Measure your sleeve cap between front and back notches and cut two sleeve heads of that length. Round out the ends. Pin the folded side with the raw edges up to the underside of the sleeve in the seam allowance. Then you can either machine stitch or hand sew in place. The shoulder pads come in two mirrored pieces. There is a center notch for where it lines up with the shoulder seam. The shorter side of the shoulder pad is the front, while the back is the longer area. Match the correct pad to the shoulder with the convex curve facing the shoulder seam. Trim if needed. Then I find it helpful to fold the pad and draw a line down the center as a guide for sewing it in. With the edge of the shoulder pad at the edge of the armhole seam allowance, hand sew along the shoulder seam with loose stitches. Then secure both ends to the seam allowance with a sturdy but loose stitch. To prepare for the lining, trim the underarm seam to a quarter inch between the front and back notches. Then turn out and pull the sleeve head into the sleeve so that it's not all bunched up. Hey. Before we assemble or insert the lining, we need to prep the hem. We'll start with the vent. On the side that folds back, we are going to create a mitered corner. Pinch your hem and vent allowance together until they meet and they lay flat. Open it up and connect the markings with the line. Add seam allowance and fold right sides together. Sew it up along your marked line, then snip the corner, flatten the seam, and turn out. For the unfolded side of the vent, fold back the hem allowance and pin in place for later. We won't sew that up until we have inserted the lining. To finish the front edges with the facing, fold back the facing at the seam and pin it in place. Sew and finish your stitch half an inch away from the facing edge. Snip the corner, then turn out and snip from the right angle of the hem allowance to the stitch. This will allow you to pivot the edge of the hem allowance to sew it to the edge of the facing with the lining later. To assemble the lining, take your back right and left lining pieces and place right sides together. Make sure that the drill holes in the vent area line up exactly. Sew the center back seam stopping at the drill holes. Also make a diagonal cut into the corner of the back right piece. Locate the notches on the neck of your back lining and pin together. Fold back your top layer and sew this pleat in place. And as always, press this seam. Now take your front lining pieces and with right sides facing, stitch the shoulders and side seams, then press open. Now we are going to gather the sleeve cap similar to the shell sleeve. Then with right sides facing, sew up the seams of the underarms, iron and turn out. Then pin to the lining armhole with notches matching and sew in place. Now that the lining is complete, we will insert it into the shell. Place your coat shell with the right side up and the facings exposed. 
Pin your lining right side down to the facing edge, matching all the notches. Snip the curve of the lining neck to more easily attach it to the back facing. Then sew this entire seam, stopping 4 inches from the hem on either side. Turn out and iron the seam that you have sewn. Push your lining sleeve into the shell sleeve. Make sure the lining sleeve seam lines up directly in between the shell under sleeve seam. Take the end of your sleeve and fold the lining and shell as it would be when sewn and pin in place. Hey. Pull out the sleeves from the inside and pin the sleeve hems together right sides facing, then sew. Next, fold up the sleeve hem of your shell and sew seam allowance to seam allowance. This keeps the sleeve hem in place. Then pull your sleeves right side out. To keep the lining from pulling out with your arm, you can tack the lining and shell at the shoulder seams on the inside. Now let's tackle the back vent. Turn your coat inside out once again and line up the vent of the lining and shell. Start with the underlay of the vent, matching up the edges and pin. Mark one inch up from the lining hem and snip a notch. This will be the fold over of the lining. Then line up the hem of the lining and shell and pin. So a small area of the hem. Then fold the lining at the notch created. Also fold up the hem at its notch and sew the entire vent seam. Clip this corner and turn out. You'll see that there's a nice pleat created. For the top vent flap, snip into the corner of your lining towards the drill hole, just an eighth or sixteenth shy. Line up this lining drill hole with the drill hole on the shell fabric and pin in place. The drill hole is where you will start your stitch. Next, on the mitered seam, Make a mark a half inch down and a half inch in. This is the apex of the half inch seam allowance. Also mark a half inch in and over on the hem of the lining. These two markings will meet. And starting from that point, Stitch the hem of the lining to the shell hem about 4 inches or so. Now that this is sewn, mark a notch 1 inch from the lining hem like we did for the assembly of the vent underlay. Then fold in the open side of the vent lining and fold at the notch created and pin in place. Sew up the remaining opening with a hand stitch. You may need to remove the pin securing your fold. Then refold the area we folded earlier and stitch the seam allowance down to hold it in place. <laughs> 
turn it out and slip stitch the opening. To finish the top of the vent, we are going to snip the remaining corner of the shell fabric, which will free it up, then turn out your coat. First straighten the outer or top vent, then straighten the under vent and push the seam allowance inside so that it's all concealed. Pin this in place, then stitch it down. Before you close up the hem, do one last thing to secure the lining to the shell. Stitch about a 5 inch section of the lining and shell side seams together. To finish the hem, we can close up one side and slip stitch a small section of the other side. I pulled the right side through the left side and machine stitched the hem closed. With the hem sewn, I marked one inch from the lining hem, folded it at that notch, and sewed closed the open edge of the facing. Then I trimmed the excess seam allowance, sewed up the hem at the side seam like we did with the sleeve hem, then turned it out. I flipped it in enough to finish up from the facing to the side seam, leaving the rest open. Once that is turned out, sew the seam allowances together at the hem. Then check that you've removed any pins and have done everything you have to do inside the coat. So you want to finish by folding the open area in by its half inch seam allowance and pin it along the hem. Slip stitch this area closed. Once complete, the hem will want to fold down that extra half inch as it has been designed to do. Now let's finish this thing properly. A well-pressed coat will look designer, or at least it won't give off that impression that it's homemade. And homemade in a bad way. <laughs> So I'm going to press all the seams and the vent using my trusty vintage iron to set the press. Finally, the buttons and buttonholes need to be added to this double-breasted coat. I was afraid to mess up the fabric, so I did a little test sample first, and I thought it looked great. So I went ahead and carefully sewed in my buttonholes. I also sewed my one buttonhole to the right side of the coat. Then I added my buttons, two to the right side, with one on the reverse and two to the left. I marked my button placement in relation to my basted buttonhole markings, making sure that the check pattern will align when it's buttoned. I used a toothpick to create space for the shank of the button. After sewing all of my stitches with the toothpick, 
I wrapped the thread around the base, pull it tight, then I wrapped it about six or seven times in total, and then tied it off and cut the remaining thread. And the coat is now ready to wear! Wanted to say hi. Hi guys! Don't forget to like and subscribe because Lydia Naomi is awesome. <laughs>